I'm Sierra Robertson. I'm Olivia Nicolay. I'm Regan Eikhoff. And I'm Petra Algatti. The saying, what goes around comes around, may be intended to describe karma, yet it is also extremely applicable to explaining fashion. Fashion is constantly being adapted, changed, and improved. We see new trends fade in, while others fade out. We never really see new forms of clothing, but just adaptions upon older forms. According to Cassie Murdoch from Vocative, a content partner with New York Fashion Week, in an article titled, That Sweater is So 80s, Fashion Trends Are Like Clockwork. The fashion cycle is not an exact science, yet it has been determined that on average, approximately every 20 years, trends will come back. We are affected by fashion every day. Each morning we wake up and decide which outfit we are going to wear from dawn to dusk. Everybody has their different types of styles and prefers different types of clothing. But have you ever wondered how the fashion of today came to be? Today we'll be talking to you about women's, women's fashion in America. First, we'll talk about pre-World War II era, next the 1950s through the 1980s, also known as the Cold War era. And finally, we'll finish off with the 1990s up until present day. The first half of the 20th century was a whirlwind in trends, worldly influence, and changes in what defines female fashion. As the Roaring Twenties rolled in, decadence and glamour were key. The drastic upswing in the United States economy coined this era as the <coughs> golden age. This was apparent in the way of dress. Flapper fashion became super prominent. Flapper fashion was characterized by short, non-form-fitting dresses that were usually glittery or filled with sequins. Women often wore their hair short with fancy headpieces. One art style in particular, known as Art Deco, influenced the luxurious and androgynous, which means non-gender conforming, styles of the time, which made it a hallmark of the 1920s. According to the article, What is Art Deco?, which was published in 2017 by Marilyn F. Friedman, an arts and design historian, Art Deco is described as an expression of new wave feminism, which was embodied by fashion icon Coco Chanel, who wore short bobbed hair. The lack of frilly hoop skirts and more womanly styles paralleled women's newfound ability to behave alongside men and no longer be suppressed in the new upcoming decade. Now on to the 30s. The economy hit a steep downhill spiral leading up to the Great Depression, which finally hit in October of 1929, lasting 10 years until 1939. This led to a much more subdued sense of style throughout America. The style became more feminine and conservative unlike the previous decade. Women couldn't afford to go out or keep up with any worldly trends, so they dug into the back of their closets and reverted back to pre-World War II fashion. With the 1940s came the emergence of World War II, and according to Khan Academy, an academic website founded in 2007 in an article titled American Woman in World War II, Around 5 million women joined the workforce between 1940 and 1945, in addition to 350,000 women serving in the armed forces. Given this data, it's reasonable to assume that the fashion of the time became much more masculine and practical in comparison to the feminine, frilly styles of years past. Also, women began to take jobs in factory labor positions, requiring them to wear pants, thus revolutionizing women's legwear. Also due to rationing, it became incredibly difficult to purchase new clothing, so women were encouraged to maintain their current wardrobe to prevent the purchase of fabrics or rubber materials that could be necessary for the wartime effort. Now that we have talked to you about pre-World War II era and the pre-World War II fashion, we'll be taking a look at the Cold War era. While men were away fighting in World War II, women began taking on more roles and becoming independent in a whole new way. Clothing was very restricted throughout the war and even after it ended. Christian Dior was a fashion designer who created his clothes based on the strict fashion of the early 1950s. Skirts, dresses, and the size of collars were very regulated. These regulations resulted in slim, er, in strict, straight silhouettes. Women also began wearing comfortable clothing like suits, shirt dresses, and pants to work. According to the article, What Did Women Wear in the 1950s, 1950s Fashion Guide, created in 2009, published by Debbie Sessions, author of Vintage Dancer, which is a website dedicated to fashion history. During the daytime, women had their hemline stop at about the knee, and then in the nighttime had their hemline stop at about the ankle. Plaid and floral prints, along with poodle skirts and saddle shoes, saddle shoes were very popular. Women had to leave the house fully groomed, with accessories including hats, bags, belts, and gloves, and jewelry that coordinated with their outfit. A major fashion icon of the 1950s was Marilyn Monroe. Throughout the 1950s, there was a prevalent expectation to match and keep up with neighbors and friends and to impress them. Matching outfits for the whole family were super popular, especially on vacation or holidays. Matching dresses for mothers and daughters, as well as for sisters, became some of the most remembered styles of the decade. 
Fashion from the 1950s greatly showcased the mood of the decade as well as emphasized consumerism and conformity. 1960s fashion was bipolar in just about every way. There were lots of diverse trends. The early 1960s fashion reflected the elegance of First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy with tailored skirts, large buttons, stilettos, and boxy jackets. Simple geometric dresses known as shifts were also in style. The early 1960s were conservative and restrained, and more classic in style and design. The early 60s were much reminiscent of the 1950s, with drainpipe jeans and capri pants worn by fashion icon Audrey Hepburn. Women wore button-down plaid shirts with slim blue jeans or slacks. Traditionally, trousers had been viewed by Western society as masculine, but by this time in the 60s, it had become commonplace for women to wear pants every day. These included Levi's jeans or drainpipe jeans that were stretchy with elastane. Space Age fashion began in the 1950s, but really boomed in the 1960s. It was heavily influenced by the space race of the Cold War. This look was defined by boxy shapes, thigh-length hemlines, and bold accessories. The synthetic materials were very popular with the Space Age fashion designers. The synthetic fabrics allowed the fashion designers to create garments that looked like bold shapes and um, plastic textures. During the late 1960s, there was backlash from the feminist community because they believed the more feminine styles were being forced upon them by the fashion industry. These women often wore more masculine or androgynous clothing, like work boots, jeans, and berets. Black women often wore their hair in afros in retaliation to hair straighteners used by upper-class white women. At the 1968 Miss America protest, women symbolically threw a number of feminine fashion-related objects into a freedom trash can. These objects included bras, girdles, corsets, makeup, false eyelashes, and many other things which they coined as instruments of female torture. These women also pushed for things like equal pay and reproductive freedom. Hippies exploded in the late 1960s. They represented peace and freedom. A symbol of the peace and freedom was shown to us by fashion expert Yoko Ono. According to the article, Clothing of 1960s, first published in France in 1927, women wore bell bottom super short skirts, fringing floor prints, tie-dye shirts, blouses, and other bright, swirly, and extraordinary colors. The early 1970s were similar to the late 1960s, with bright colors and psychedelic patterns in trend, worn by fashion icon Cher. Polyester was the material of choice for this time period. Women wore tight pants with platform shoes. By 1973, Women were wearing low-cut pants with high boots, and by 1975, bell-bottoms were all the rage. For the women that didn't want to participate in the hippie fad, they wore tight-fitted shirts or dresses with a fitted lapel blazer. There were many ways to accessorize at the time, including chokers, headbands, scarves, and jewelry made out of wood, stones, feathers, and beads. By the mid-1970s, the hippie look fell out of fashion, and men and women both began wearing more comfortable clothing. This included things like with t-shirts with elaborate designs, slogans, and logos. Women also began working more, which resulted in more tailored business outfits. This included tailored, blazer, tailored blazers, midi skirts, um, blouses, and high heels. Women also began gravitating more towards earthly tones and utilitarian aesthetics. This included things like um, mil militaristic style jumpsuits and khakis. Some accessories that went along with these styles were relaxed silhouettes, patch pockets, and white belts. Disco took over the late 1970s. Disco style included jersey wrap dresses, tube tops, sequin shirts, spandex shorts, and high slit skirts. Women were wearing pantsuits, leisure suits, and jumpsuits. That's a lot of suits. According to an article named What to Know About 1970s Fashion, published in 2018 by Megan Dubitsky, an author for the Central Casting, Every woman had a cowl neck sweater in her closet. In the winter, women often wore flowers, skirts, and pants, while in the summer, women wore short shorts and tight-fitted shirts. One common theme that stayed throughout the 1970s was that the pants were tight-fitted. Early 1980s fashion was very similar to the fashion of the 1970s. It was subdued in color. There were lots of browns, oranges, tans, and blacky shades. It was very popular to dress like a tennis player with leaner and tighter clothing. The lower velvet and high waistlines were also very popular. In 1983, there was a slight 1950s throwback in the style of women's dresses. This time in the 80s, the mid-80s, is what people remember the most and associate with the decade. Pop stars like Cyndi Lauper heavily influenced fashions of the time. The younger crowd wore bright and outgoing colors, patterns, and makeup. These included sunglasses, bangles, hoop earrings, teased hair, 
loud makeup like blue mascara and yellow eyeshadow. Also, shoulder pads, converse, and fingerless gloves were in. This was a very flexible time fashion-wise for the older crowd. Outfits varied from skin-tight cotton stirrup pants or leggings with giant turtlenecks to parachute pants with low-cut v-necks, members-only jackets, and high-waisted belts. In the late 1980s, Reebok versus Nike was the athletic wear battle of the time. Michael Jordan helped Nike win. Every kid had a pair of Air Jordans and a Chicago Bulls baseball cap. When it came to women's clothing, it got way more baggy, and Cosby sweaters were very in style. Some other things that were very in style were animal print and fanny packs. Cindy Lauper, a famous singer and Grammy winner, influenced the 1980s with her multiple styles. Her wild child look, which consisted of bright hair, neon makeup, and many accessories, was truly 80s fashion. She mixed, matched, and clashed colors and patterns to create her unique look. Influenced by Cindy Lauper, neon colors, crazy makeup, many accessories, and name brands were extremely popular. Now that we've covered the Cold War era, we will examine the 1990s until current day fashion. The main style of the 1990s was the too cool to care look. This is where the grunge look came from, which is something that we never want to go back to. The grunge look consisted of combat boots, ripped denim, baggy tees, flared dresses, and an edgy attitude. The grunge look was shown to us by Gwen Stefani. Loose silhouettes and sports details were also in. In the mid-1990s, the 1970s came back into trend. Women were wearing tie-dye shirts with bell bottoms and long, straight hair. There was a lot of homemade jewelry and self-designed clothing at this time. Also at this time, anything 80s related style became a bad thing. No more wild makeup or bright colors. Women wanted simple, humble, solid colors. There were many hairstyles in at this time, including the Rachel haircut from Friends, Half Up Half Down, Mini Buns, Scrunchies, Butterfly Clips, Bandanas, Colored Hair Streaks, and Crimping. In the late 1990s, the grunge look went away and sexy came into the light. This included tight clothing and glamour. Minimalism also came into style. Birkenstocks and other things fit very well into this fashion trend. Then an upcoming pop star named Britney Spears brought up the schoolgirl look. This included mini skirts, crop tops, chokers, scrunchies, and hoop earrings. Some other fashion icons of the time were Kate Moss, the Spice Girls, and Marc Jacobs. Now that we have talk you, talked to you about the 1990s, we will tell you about fashion in the 2000s. According to the article, What Ought to Wear, published in 2009 by R Brian Rinfuss, the fashion in the 2000s was really a huge mashup. This describes this decade perfectly. At the kickoff of the 2000s, Y2K fashion was in the spotlight. Y2K fashion focused on future and technology. This included monochrome colors, metallic clothing, and reflective clothing. When the first iPod came out in 2001, it became somewhat of an accessory to the fashionable youth. Although this clothing was very fashionable, a lot of it is what we would call fast fashion. Fast fashion is clothing that is made very quickly, but not in the most ethical ways or with the best quality. The largest advantage to fast fashion is that you could have expensive looking things for a lot less. The main clothing of this time was tube tops, tracksuits, sweatpants, and low-rise jeans. Very, very low-rise jeans. This sense of fashion was inspired by celebrities like Paris Hilton and Christina Aguilera, who were definitely fashion icons of the early 2000s. On September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers were struck by two planes in a terrorist attack. 3,000 people died and many more were injured. This tragic event rated sadness throughout America. People began to dress more modestly with duller colors. This is where Rising Denim was created. In 2006, the shoe we love to hate, the Croc, was born and brought into the spotlight. Even President George W. Bush was spotted wearing the iconic Crocs. In the late 2000s, fashion inspired by Japanese culture became much more popular with women, younger women and teens. This popped up as a result from Japanese music coming more, becoming more popular in America. People who were inspired by this fashion trend dressed more childlike and colorful. Some clothing accessories that went along with this fashion trend were high knee socks, colorful dresses and clothing, and hair bows. Another thing that came out of this decade was that people began to get very concerned about global warming and environmental issues. Another thing that became very important to people was the fair trade label. According to the fair trade website, which was last updated in 2019, clothing that is fair trade approved is made under ethical conditions and is environmentally friendly. This label is still in effect today with companies like Patagonia. Now flip the calendar to the 2010s. According to 2010 Style Trends Revisited, published in 2017, published by the Rolling Stones, a magazine that focuses on hip-hop culture, 
The 2010s were inspired by the explosion of social media. The early 2010s were based on 1990s styles as windbreakers, neons, and wedges stole the limelight. Skinny jeans were popularized in 2010 and are still very popular today. According to The Good Trade, a website dedicated to ethical women's fashion, in an article titled, Who Made Our Clothes? How to Get Involved During Fashion Revolution Week 2018, the Rana Plaza tragedy, which occurred on April 24th of 2013, left people questioning who made their clothes. The Rana Plaza tragedy was a collapse of the Rana Plaza building in Bangladesh, which housed five garment factories. 1,100 workers were injured, and thousands more were killed, and thousands more people were injured. Ever since this tragic event occurred, people have shifted their focus towards brands who use more ethical and sustainable practices in producing their clothing. From 2016 to now, we are mainly influenced by social media and celebrities. Nude colors and tight clothing, like bodysuits and skin-tight t-shirts, are being thoroughly promoted by the Kardashians. Even though we would rather not admit it, the 1990s are still in style. We see stars like Gigi Hadid and Kendall Jenner rocking the mom jeans, tiny sunglasses, and crop tops. People are also more concerned with the environment now more than ever, which has caused an increase in fashion made out of flax, linen, and organic cotton. People have also been purchasing used clothing, used clothes from used clothing stores such as Plato's Closet or Savers. This has a friendly effect on the environment as it prevents the clothes from going into a landfill. In conclusion, we talked to you about the major fashions from the pre-World War II era, which included flapper dresses, conservative clothing, and androgynous clothing, the Cold War era, which includes fashion icon Marilyn Monroe, matching outfits for the whole family, and pop star Cyndi Lauper, and the 1990s until today, which included Britney's famous schoolgirl look, George Bush wearing the iconic Crocs, and the multiple styles including mom jeans. We also told you how fashion impacts the clothing in the United States. The saying what goes around comes around does definitely describe fashion. As we saw in the speech, new styles and designs came and went, but as years passed by, they always seemed to come back. We hope that you will take away something valuable from the speech and come to appreciate how our history and culture influences the clothing that we wear today.